Today's video is sponsored by Twitch. Hey, it's Chris. You probably have heard that Macs aren't for gaming, but I wouldn't really say that, at least not about the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Now, it's true that Macs aren't optimized for gaming. They're not designed to be dedicated gaming machines, but this 16-inch MacBook Pro, it can handle some legit gaming. Now, I didn't buy my 16-inch MacBook Pro and then max out most of the specs to be a gaming laptop. I bought it to be a video editing workhorse. You guys know that if you're a subscriber. But I started seeing all these videos where people were gaming, like legit gaming, on the MacBook Pro, this MacBook Pro. And I was like, maybe I need to see what that's all about. Now, this is gonna be another fairly long video because I got a lot to say, a lot to talk about. But don't panic if you don't want a long video. There's timestamps down in the description. That said, there's gonna be a Q&A at the end related to gaming on the Mac. It's gonna be a good one. There's gonna be a Twitch unboxing at the end. So make sure to stick around for that. That's gonna be entertaining. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. It's the Daily Tech After Party. The link for that's down in the description too. But first of all, I wanna start this video off by talking about why this computer can game, number one. Number two, I wanna talk about whatever Mac you're on, where do you find all the games, the great games? And then of course, at the end, I'm gonna do some quick gameplay just as a demo so you can see with a variety of different games and you can see my settings and we'll talk about it, see how it works. So let's start things off by talking about why this Mac, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, can game. And here's the thing, gaming means different things to different people. You got your really casual gamers who are really into things like Apple Arcade. And you got like people who really like their more demanding games. And I tend to like those more demanding games. But at the same time, I'm not out to like prove that I can have a computer that runs the craziest games with the craziest graphics and beat other people. Like that's not, for me, it's like, I just want to have fun and play the games that I wanna play. And that's more what this video is about. And yeah, I'm legitimately surprised at what this Mac can handle. Modern Warfare at 1440p, wow. And in terms of performance, I mean, it can top a PC with the GTX 1650 Max-Q. This thing has insane speakers, it has insane mics, and it has an insanely thin profile versus a dedicated gaming laptop. Speaking of more traditional gaming laptops, I just sold one this week, actually. And I was telling my wife, I think I'm gonna miss it. But actually, as I was working on this video, it turns out I don't really miss it because I'm having that much fun gaming on this computer. Let's just mention the specs really quick. The eight core starts at $37.99 and mine has a few upgrades. 2.4 gigahertz, eight core processor with a turbo boost up to five gigahertz plus $200, 64 gigs of RAM, plus $800, four terabyte SSD storage, plus another $1,000, and the ability to use Final Cut Pro 10, priceless. So this laptop that I got for video editing is actually specced pretty nicely. And by the time you throw in an Xbox controller and an ultra wide monitor, yeah, it's an okay gaming setup. Actually, it's more than okay. I know that there's gonna be commenters who come on here and be like, oh, PC's only for gaming, and that's not a, even a gaming monitor, and your G-Sync, and blah, 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 blah no, no gaming mouse. Uh, but no, like, I'm gaming and enjoying it on here, and that's all that matters. So next, let's talk a little bit about finding games for your Mac. And what I really mean is finding good games, like great games, not just games, but stuff that's exciting, that you really wanna play. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because it's not so obvious. A lot of people will probably take one look in the Mac App Store and be like, there's nothing really here, so you can't game on a Mac. But that's not the whole story. So probably if you wanna do any quote unquote serious gaming on your Mac, then you wanna go the bootcamp route. So bootcamp, if you don't know about it, it's a free Apple utility that lets you install Windows on your Mac. Once you install Windows, then you have a vast library of really awesome cutting edge games available to you. It might sound scary if you've never done it before. Yes, Windows does cost a little bit, but you can install it without a key, kind of try this out and see if it's for you first. And it's super easy, really. There's a great iMore article that can walk you through it. I'll try to link that up down below. It's not hard at all. So like I mentioned, I have four terabytes of SSD storage on this Mac. And what I did was when I partitioned this and divided up my hard drive space, I gave Windows 300 gigabytes to deal with, which is plenty for installing a few games. So then when I go to boot up my computer, I can boot into Mac OS or into Windows. I think you just hold down the option key if I'm not mistaken. Then once you get Windows loading up, it's sort of like a free for all. It's a buffet. You can choose from all kinds of different stuff, especially with this laptop. Basically almost nothing, I say almost nothing, should be off 
limits for you that you want to check out. It's just going to be a matter of changing the settings. So you can get the Epic Launcher and install several different games. You can get Origin, you can get Steam, and just go from there. Whatever your heart desires, find it, play it. Now, Boot Camp and Windows is not the only route that you can take. If it sounds like too much work, or you're just not interested in Windows or whatever, you can check out the Mac App Store. And there's actually a few different decent games inside. So for instance, I grabbed Rise of the Tomb Raider from the Mac App Store, and that's great. There's also Civilization VI. There's a handful of other titles that maybe you haven't heard of in the news, but I think that you would have a lot of fun with, have good graphics, good gameplay, and if you check out the ratings, are pretty highly rated. A couple years back, actually, there was an Alien game, like Alien the movie, you know what I'm talking about, not just random aliens. And it had really good graphics. The graphics were so good, my current Mac back then couldn't even handle the full settings. And so you don't know what you're gonna find in there. You'll find some interesting good stuff. Now, while the Mac App Store does have a few interesting titles, and I guess you can include Apple Arcade there as well, because that's where you're gonna find it, it doesn't have a vast library of AAA titles. So one thing that you can do too, if you don't wanna go the Windows route, is install Steam and check out the games that are available there, like Dota 2, for instance. But the thing is, you can install Steam on your Mac, or you can load up Boot Camp and Windows and get Steam on the PC side of things, and you'll have a lot more uh, better titles, you know, like stuff that would be more impressive on the Windows side of the Steam experience. So just keep that in mind. Now let's say that you have a really fast internet connection. You have a couple options for playing some games through your Mac. Number one, you could do something like NVIDIA's GeForce Now, which is in beta right now, but they gave me an invite and I hooked into there and it's gonna let you play just a super huge assortment of top level, top tier games. So you have to have a really strong, speedy internet connection to make this work, but all the heavy lifting gets done in the cloud off of your computer and then you're playing it through your Mac. So technically, you don't need to install anything. Games are gonna load and play in and install instantly. Um, it's very, very cool. And I really like the interface. Something similar uh, would be the idea of Google Stadia, which I have not tried um, at all. I would like to, just haven't gotten around to it. Um, so I can't endorse it one way or another, but I have tried NVIDIA's GeForce now, and it's pretty slick. And again, if you don't wanna mess around with Boot Camp, you can also find some games that will let you download them straight from the developer's website, like Fortnite from Epic Games. So you're not gonna find every awesome game that you can play on a Mac in the Mac App Store. So you gotta know where to look, I guess is what I'm saying. And the funny thing is, it doesn't get any easier than going to Fortnite's website, hitting it, download, install, whatever, you're ready to play. But I'm much better at Fortnite on mobile. Give me an iPhone or an iPad and I'll crush you on Fortnite on mobile, but I started playing around, messing around with Fortnite on this setup with my Mac with the Xbox controller, and I'm terrible. It's like relearning the game all over again. All right, so now we're gonna jump over to my setup, get some gameplay in, show you the settings, see how things are working, but I do just wanna remind you that this is a sponsored video, sponsored by Twitch, and I'm gonna be unboxing something very cool that they sent me in the mail, I hope. Uh, it's cool, it's a big box anyways right after the gameplay. And then we're gonna get to the Q&A. Okay, welcome to my desk. It's time to launch some games. I'm gonna start on the Mac side of things because, and then we'll we'll launch into Boot Camp. Um, so let's load up, uh, let's load up Tomb Raider first and see how that goes. Okay, honestly, I'm just doing this super casual. Um, so my mouse isn't even plugged in because it's plugged in through my monitor. Um, so I, we're just gonna look at the settings and uh, just see how the, what the performance is like, how it plays. Whoa, all right, I mean, already. This is just a cinematic, so it's not gameplay, but I feel like this looks pretty great, you know? All right, here we go. Uh, I don't know if you can hear the fan spinning up a little bit, um, but it's definitely making some noise. I gotta say, let me look around here. This, this is really optimized to work really well on the Mac. I'm really impressed with the graphics level and stuff. So let's check out the settings. So right now, the preset is at high, texture quality high, shadow quality high, level of detail high, and everything's running really great. So I wonder if I can kick that up a little bit. Okay, we're playing, everything's on high. There's no weird frame issues, stutters. Everything looks absolutely amazing. Real quick, let's change these settings and see if I can bump them up even higher. Very high, oh, that's it, that's it. That's as high as I can go. Um, how about reflection quality? I'll get that very high. Dynamic foliage is already high. 
So basically, I think we're running things at the max right here for this particular game. So this one gets a thumbs up. If you're going to play this on this computer maxed out, you can definitely do it. Let's see what else there is. Okay, so I think the next thing we're going to try is Fortnite. Just look at the settings before we head into it. So right now, uh, I was messing around with this a little bit last night. Everything, it's at 60 frames per second, um, and shadows high, anti-aliasing epic, textures epic, effects high, post-processing epic. So, okay, here we go. Um, all the settings are pretty high. This is not really a lot of action happening right here, but this is actually pretty smooth and fluid. I'm not used to this new island yet either. I don't know how much Fortnite you've played, but... Okay, there's a little bit of screen tearing. I can see that already. Actually, let's look at the settings one more time really quick. Um, let's go settings, and so we're at 60 frames per second, and view distance is far. Let's change that to epic. Anti-aliasing is epic, texture is epic. Effects is just set at high, and I can't change that. It doesn't look like. Post-processing, epic. Uh, V-sync is off. Let me turn that on, just see what happens. There's just no stuttering at all. And maybe that V-Sync is going to fix the screen tearing. It looks like it did. This is so playable. It's not even funny. At the highest settings. So there you go. Fortnite is awesome on here. So there you go. You can see. You can play some really cool games uh, just with the Mac. Nothing else needed. Uh, so yeah. You don't have to feel like a Mac can't game where there's nothing good to play just because you're not going into boot camp or something. What we're going to do next is load up boot camp and try out some other games. All right, so here we are. And what I wanna do is load up two games for you. Apex Legends, which I'm awful at. I just started playing it yesterday. And my favorite game, probably current game right now, Star Wars Battlefront 2, which has got the Rise of Skywalker update. And I'm gonna hook this back up to the screen so that I can use the mouse. Honestly, I played this so little, I don't even know all the characters and their special abilities and stuff. <laughs> so you're about to see a terrible performance. That's just an FYI. But it doesn't matter, because for our purposes, we're just looking around, we're seeing how does it work, and what are the settings that it runs at smoothly. Champion Squad, what does that mean? I don't even know, I play Fortnite more, so. Okay, so right here in the drop screen, you can see it's not 100% smooth as we're flying through the air. But let me jump in here and look at the settings. So the resolution, 3072 by 1920, that's the native, and it's set to high. Um, V-Sync says triple buffered. This would get rid of tearing. I'm gonna put that up to dynamic, which is the highest setting and see how that goes. Someone just shot me. I'm already shot. <laughs> I'm trying to look at this and I've got shot. Texture streaming set it very high. I'm gonna, that's six gigabytes of VRAM. I'm gonna up that to eight. Texture filtering, um, let's turn that all the way up. Ambient occlusion, it was on medium, let's go high. Model detail high, effects high, impact marks high, ragdolls high, okay. Everything is pretty much high. I'm gonna apply this. And now uh, now that I got all the settings um, set to high, like what does this look like? I don't actually see the screen tearing that I, oh, I'm dead already. I'm never gonna get to check. How am I gonna test this? <laughs> but I have to say the screen tearing was eliminated. So now that I changed, uh, I turned on the syncing, the V-Sync, I'm not getting that screen tearing issue. And everything is basically set to high right now. This doesn't seem slow at all. But like the plants here waving around, that looks really good. So Fortnite, I think, actually played smoother on its top settings than this does. But I feel like this is just really, really playable and looks really, really good. I mean, who could complain about this? So let's launch Battlefront 2. Let's check out video. There's not a lot to change here. Full screen resolution, so 3072 by 1920. High dynamic range is auto. Filmic effects on, film grain on, um, UI quality, let's do 4K because it was 1080p. And the graphics quality is set to low right now. I'm gonna up it to high and see how it does. Seems pretty playable right now. I already filmed the Q&A for this and I told somebody in answer to their question that the Omen X2S had better textures than what I thought this was getting. But I don't think that's true. Now that I'm seeing it, I think that the textures on here at these high settings are just as good. It looks just excellent. All right, this guy's gotta go. Surprisingly, good. I When I bought this, I had no idea that this was gonna be this good at gaming. So welcome back to the desk setup. Like I told you, we've got a big giant unboxing. I just wanna remind you, this video was sponsored by Twitch, and that's who sent me this enormous box. 
Seriously, I have no idea what's in here, but I'm excited to check it out. Now, I can't imagine anybody at this point not knowing what Twitch is, but just in case you don't know, it's the leading streaming platform where you can watch and chat with favorite creators from around the world. Creators like who? That's a good question. One of my favorites is a guy named Kaz Risk. So twitch.tv slash Kaz Risk. He's under a thousand followers right now, which is cool. I like the underground. And also last time I checked, he was playing Star Wars Battlefront 2, which you guys know is my favorite game right now. So if you've ever thought about getting into streaming and creating a community around your own passion, Twitch could be the perfect place, whether it's gaming or food or music or whatever. But if you are into gaming, of course, you can check out people streaming Fortnite, World of Warcraft, League of Legends, all the best stuff. All right, enough yip yap. Let's get this thing open. Uh, I got my own Twitch pillow. <laughs> so, wow, there you go. I don't know where I'm gonna put that. It is nice and soft though. It's like we got a Twitch hoodie. I don't know why it's pink. We got some Twitch straws. Hey, these are like reusable straws. We use these around the house. Metal reusable Twitch straws. If you like this stuff in this box and you want to pick some up for yourself or maybe as a present, it's amazon.com slash Twitch merch. Here's a pretty dope looking Twitch backpack. Got a Twitch pin. Stick it on your backpack. Perfect. All right. And there's a second Twitch pin. Some Twitch slipper socks. Wow. This is like thermally insulated. Super grippy though. So this looks like a premium insulated stainless steel wide mouth bottle. Wow, that's pretty cool. I'm now the proud owner of a very comfy and soft Twitch blanket. All right, last thing, Twitch mug. This is actually really cool. I like it, I'm gonna use it. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the Q&A. You guys asked a lot of really interesting questions. Question number one that I'm gonna answer, can you play Minesweeper? Ha ha ha. I'm sure that was total sarcasm, but actually, yes you can. Next question is, why does Call of Duty Modern Warfare have these weird rainbow glitches when you're playing through boot camp? That's a really good question. If you don't know what this person is talking about, yeah, there's this weird artifacting going on, like on the floor as you're walking past it. The colors are a little bit off. From what I understand, it is going to get fixed. That fix is coming, but it's just not here yet. So this next question, I assume, is kind of asked in a snarky way. Uh, but I'm gonna treat it like it's a legitimate question because maybe it was and if it's not from this person it is from somebody out there and the question is why would you game on a Mac and I think my knee-jerk reaction is if you can then why not but I think more to the point though most people out there aren't gonna go and buy two laptops especially somebody shopping for a MacBook so if you find yourself in the Mac ecosystem and you're gonna buy like a MacBook Pro for instance like this then you probably aren't, especially for the price, gonna go out and also buy like a gaming, dedicated gaming laptop, right? That just makes sense. So as long as you're just buying one laptop, then back to my first thing, if you can game on it, why not? And obviously from this video, you can see that you can do a lot of really awesome gaming on this Mac. Somebody said, I'm more interested in how long the battery lasts when you're gaming? That's a really good question. I don't have any specific numbers because that's not something that I tested, but I will say this. When I did my initial review of the 16 inch MacBook Pro, I said that I wasn't really impressed with the battery in general. And so what I would say is probably don't expect any miracles or anything like beyond like, if you're gaming, if it's really gaming, of course there's all these settings that you could tweak, the brightness of the screen and, and whatever. Um, I would say maybe, three hours, three or four hours. This is just a guess because I'm maxing out when I'm doing video work at somewhere close to five point something hours. So if it's gaming and it's really intensive, I don't know, it could be between three to five hours. I really can't say, but it's not gonna be like miraculous. So what I actually, what I would recommend if you're gonna be on the go is checking out, and I'll link this up down below, some sort of a portable power bank that can power your Mac. And if you're like, what? Those do actually exist. There's definitely, you've seen the ones for your phone, but there's a several that I know of, maybe I'll link a couple, that can go with you and power your Mac experience on the go. Next question is how does the gaming experience compare to a dedicated gaming laptop? That's a great question. The only one I can compare it to is the one that I've used recently, which was an Omen X2S. It was priced at around $2,000 and it was a beast. It could absolutely handle, I think it had better graphics capabilities um, for gaming at 1080p, better frame rates and stuff um, if it comes down to the wire. Um, so like one of my favorite games, Star Wars Battlefront 2, when I'm playing on the Omen, I noticed that the textures were like 
crazy, really great, and really enjoyable. But I also noticed that the fans were like super loud too because they're trying to cool it. So the Mac, I would say, is capable of playing all my favorite games as well, and they still look really great. Um, not in every instance can I turn uh, the graphics all the way up in the settings, but I'm okay with that. Um, for, for my life, it's cool. But it's quieter than the gaming laptop, it's thinner, it looks better than the gaming laptop. So those are some of the differences. And the next question is kind of related. Somebody asked about the heat. Well, let me put it this way. Last night, I grabbed the MacBook Pro, I grabbed the Xbox controller, because I'm testing things out for this video, hop into bed, on top of the bed, I guess, and I got the laptop sitting on my lap and my Xbox controller nice and comfy, sitting with the pillow behind. It was great. This is gonna happen more, by the way. And I could do that, and the laptop didn't burn my legs. Now, if I was gaming with the dedicated lap, uh, gaming laptop that I was just talking about in the last question, I could not do that. Um, that thing was a scorcher. Like, it could have burned through my legs, through the bed, through the floor, that thing got hot. This thing gets warm. You definitely feel how warm it gets, but it doesn't scorch you, won't burn you. Um, the heat is actually much, managed much better. I know like last year was a joke, stick the MacBook Pro in the freezer because it couldn't cool itself down enough. That's not an issue this year. The thermals are really great. And if you're just listening to it by itself, you'll hear when the fans have been up, right? And be like, oh, this is kind of loud, but it's so quiet compared to something like a dedicated gaming laptop that sounds like a jet engine, for real. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it. You guys should check out the podcast, The Daily Tech After Party. It's linked up down below. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. It's Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K, -K, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.